Hey everybody, it's Glider Cat, and it's time to play today. Oh man, oh man, I've been waiting a long time. Today we're going to start a Let's Play a series of Captain of Industry, and if you look at the bottom right, that's the version I'm playing. The pre-alpha version 0.1.5, and I believe this is the version that's going to kind of launch their Kickstarter. So you can check that out. I'll try and put a link to that or at least a link to their main web page in the description of this video. So check that out. And if you want to help the development, uh, yeah, highly recommend that. Looks like a very, very cool game. I featured this game way back in early April. I think it was April 3rd in a preview video. And uh, even at that time, I didn't have a chance to play it. So I just, I just scoured their website for footage and put together that preview video. And today we finally get to jump in. So let's do it. I'm gonna hit new game. While this loads, I played for about an hour uh, before starting this recording. So I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with the mechanics, but uh, by no means am I an expert. So we're gonna kind of learn as we go. It says, uh, keep an eye on the amount of diesel. If you run out, your trucks and excavators will stop working. So we'll have to remember that to keep an eye on our diesel fuel level. All right, we're going to do a little bit of reading here. There's some tutorial content uh, and a little bit of story narrative here to get us started. Let's jump in. Welcome, Captain. So the crew member says, Captain, we've just docked at the secret island you told us about. It was not on the map. The island looks abandoned, but it seems to have plenty of natural resources. You. Good. I'm so glad that the dock is still standing here. Unfortunately, our ship is badly damaged. It needs major repairs, so we are stuck here for now until we put the dock into better shape. How are our food supplies? Remember, we have a good amount of food supplies for now, but they won't last forever. We will need to build farms. However, we are quite low on construction parts. You. I'm glad that we packed plenty of food with us, but the lack of construction parts worries me. Is there any way we can make more of them? Crew member. Actually, right there near the dock is an abandoned communication station. We could deconstruct it and use the metal scraps to smelt iron and make more construction parts. We will need to build a furnace for that. Use. That sounds great. However, we'll also need to build a research lab where we can figure out more blueprints that we've lost. Also, the ship is no longer safe. Let's use the empty cargo containers for the settlement. We might need to build more as we are already at full capacity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Crew member, a settlement from cargo containers? That's a good idea, Captain. Let us know where we should build the research lab and furnace. You got it. Let's get to building or let's get building. All right. We'll just dismiss that. Very cool. So we know we need to build a furnace. And what was the other thing? <laughs> what was the other thing? If we look at the bottom of the screen, <clears throat> I'll show you how to get back to those messages. Look at the bottom of the screen. We've got kind of our hot bar, basically our building menu. We can come in here and see the different things. We'll walk through these, but the messages, if you ever need to come back to them, there's a little envelope here. So we need to build the research lab and a furnace. So let's get to doing that. I'm going to pause the game up in the top right of the corner. We've got a kind of a date indicator here. Speed controls. I'm not sure what that little bell is. Maybe that's okay. If we get notifications, that'll pop on. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Then uh, if we go kind of from right to left here, these are actually, I believe, building materials. This icon here. We'll see that. And then this is uh, the diesel fuel, I take it. These are the number of vehicles we've got. Again, I'm just moving at the top of the screen from right to left. We've got uh, six out of 45 possible trucks. You can see the trucks here. I'll just zoom in. And they'll take on different cargo as we, uh, as we deploy them. You'll see here in a bit. And then we've got like just some status information here. We've got 75 population. Looks like 40 months worth of food. 64 of our population are workers or, or are available workers, I should say. And then we've got five unity. Now unity, we'll see that explained as we get in the tutorial. So I won't get into that just now. We'll, it, it's going to explain it for us. And then I guess this is just the overall health of the settlement, but we'll see. I'm not sure. And then five seconds, zero seconds and in queue. So I'm not sure what that is either. I don't know if that's the backup of trucks hauling materials or not. We shall see. We already kind of looked briefly at the bottom here. We've got different items to build, transports. 
storage, buildings, housing and services, tree harvesting. We're going to do that real soon. Messages we just saw, some statistics and the world map. Let's take a look at the world map real quick. So it looks like we are here on, I take it this island, and that must be our dock and our boat. And then we've got four other places it looks like we're, we're going to be able to explore. We'll see if we can do that in this early version of the game or not. All right, so I'll get off the map here at the bottom left. There's a back button, boom. And let's see. Oh, there's the uh, the abandoned communication station that they referred to in the opening kind of dialogue. I'm going to go ahead and hit start recycling. It says start recycling this building to receive metal scrap. Trucks will automatically transport available metal scrap to our furnace. We don't have a furnace yet, but uh, let's just get that at least going or flagged as being... Uh, set to recycle. Then what do we have over here? We've got two housing blocks. They each hold 60 people. And if we look again at the top left, we've only got 75 people. So we've got some extra capacity here, about 45 spaces for about 45 more people. It looks like if I'm doing my math, right. And then uh, let's see, open settlement info. So this shows that same, we've got 75 population housing for 120. Uh, we've got Unity at 30. Now, if I hover over the little information icon, it says the maximum amount of Unity that can be accumulated, and it typically increases with the settlement size. All right, so that's our max Unity, and it looks like in the top left we have five so far. And again, we're going to learn more about that as we go. Population growth. Population can grow in size if there are good conditions and enough housing, and the growth can be reduced by diseases and pollution. Ooh. Kind of knew about pollution. I didn't know about diseases. Okay, no active, no active disease in our colony, I guess I'll call it. Services, the status of services provided to the settlement. Provided services generate valuable unity points on a monthly basis. Okay, so here we learn a little bit about the unity. So the food is getting us plus one unity. Uh, it looks like every month. And then the last little information bubble we didn't look at. Occupants says the current population size in the settlement and its available housing capacity. That's pretty self-explanatory. Exceeding the capacity leads to an overcrowded settlement, which comes with a monthly unity penalty. All right, so that's going to take down the unity we generate. All right, that's that. What is this little thing here? Uh, food market. Okay, then there's a little indicator here saying logistics. Allow truck deliveries when transport is connected. And it says, when this is off, the building will no longer request trucks to deliver it cargo as long as, as long as it is connected to a transport. So I'm not sure what that is. If that's a belt, like if we can belt food into this and then you set this and say, hey, don't waste my trucks to deliver food. I've already got it coming in on a belt. So don't, don't waste my trucks doing that. That could be, we'll find out. I'm not sure. Consumption, monthly need is one food. Consume last month. Okay, we're just at the starting month, so no one's consumed anything. We've got 40 months worth of food, and it looks like we can store up to 200. And I say months because I'm looking at the top left, and it says 40 months of food supply. So I'm guessing this is months here. Open settlement info. We just saw all that, so no need there. So that's our food building and a couple little settlement areas. What else we got? Nothing. Nothing at all. Some scrap communication center that we're going to recycle. Let's take a quick look around the island. I'm zoomed all the way out. So it looks like we have a little beach area here. Yep. Hopefully this is plenty of trees. I don't know if we can regrow them once we harvest them. And then this is a mineral. This is where I'm going to have a little bit of a challenge because I'm partially colorblind. So we'll see if that is uh, copper or what this is. Now, did play for about 45 minutes to an hour beforehand. So I know that if I click this little layers button down here at the bottom left, this will show what kind of ore we've got or what kind of material we're looking at. And I'm guessing the height represents uh, the quantity of the deposit, the height of each of these little bars. That's just my guess. But uh, that to me looks like iron ore. I'm trying to match up the colors here. Again, I'm partially colorblind, so I see this different than you do. But I'm guessing this is a big old iron deposit. Actually, maybe we'll leave that on. Let's see what else we got. What other deposits creep up? Okay, here's some stuff here. Check it out. Uh, so sand here. That looks like sand. I can tell that color probably. 
And then this maybe coal through here, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's coal. We'll find out as we mine. And then this looks like, boy, I'm going to guess this is the copper. I think it is. So big deposit there, copper, right? Not bad if that is what I think it is. A little more sand, and then we've got some gold. There's gold in them our hills right here, along with some sand. So look at this. we got a couple different um, deposits stacked on top of each other in this area. That might be interesting to figure out how we do that. And then, yeah, here's the borders of our island. Oh, we got, let's see, I think if I unpause it, there's actually some animation, right? Yeah, we can kind of see the water doing its thing. Very cool, but I'm going to keep it paused just in case. Uh, I guess so just that, so that our people aren't just sitting around eating while I do this <laughs> and chewing up all our food. All right, more sand. We'll see how that's used. It's obviously a resource in the game. One big giant copper mine, and that looks like that's it. And a fair amount of coal and a tiny little deposit of oil here. Let's see. That is probably going to throttle our production. That doesn't look very big. So anyway, that's a survey. Again, I got it zoomed out all the way. It'd be cool if it zoomed out a little bit more. But uh, it's not a huge island. We do have some decent, a decent amount of resources. I'm not sure if we can uh, grow more trees or not. We'll, we'll find out. All right, let's get to the business at hand. I think we touched on just about everything in the GUI. This is your normal bottom right. This is your normal, you know, kind of bring up all the settings kind of stuff. I won't, we can take a quick look at the settings. There's not a whole lot here. Uh, screen resolution, kind of all that self-explanatory audio. There's no music yet. Doesn't look like, but there's factory sounds, user interface, kind of feedback sounds, master volume here weather and then some stuff about controls we may pop into here later as i stumble so we'll look at that uh, later you can freeze the video if you want to read all that and then miscellaneous is our auto save 10 minutes is fine and then error reporting i'm not sure how i'm supposed to set this so i think i may have toggled it <laughs> but i'm not sure what disabled means is it currently disabled or so i may give them feedback on that anyway yeah let's get back to it uh, continue. We need to do the research center and we need to do a furnace. So let's come down here at the bottom of the screen and look for research center. How about just buildings? There we go. And we can rotate this with the R key. Pretty standard. I'm not sure if there's a, a right orientation or not. How about this? Let's plop this down right next to our scrap communication centers. Too bad we can't salvage that. It looks kind of cool. Again, I'm zoomed in max right now. This is max, and this is the furthest out. And then the center mouse button allows me to tilt, and I'm currently tilted all the way down and zoomed in all the way. Anyway, so there's a little communications tower we're going to tear apart. Actually, you can see the top is kind of falling down. Anyway, going into too much detail here. You guys can see it. All right, research lab is placed. That'll get built. And then the other thing was the furnace. So I'm guessing that's a metallurgy and smelting blast furnace. So let's pop this guy down. I'm going to use the arrow key or the uh, WASD to move me over. So now if we look at this building, it's got inputs and outputs. And let's see, I'm going to rotate it. If we look at the left, that is, I believe, uh, the ore that's going to come into the smelter. And, uh, and the coal, I think, can come in from the left side. And then we've got molten metal, I think, that's going to come out on the right side along with some exhaust gas there at the bottom right. You'll see that. Okay, it's going to cost us 50 building blocks. And we've got 340 in inventory, so let's get this going. That's going to help us actually, um, this is the first step in building more of those uh, building blocks that we're going to need. So I just hit play. And if we watch, our trucks should get into action here. Now, while they're doing their thing, they're gathering materials from the dock. We've got a bunch of supplies on the dock. If I click on it, it even says uh, the shipyard is overloaded with cargo. So we've got, um, here's our ship health. We need to repair the ship. Current state of repair of the ship, if the value is below the green mark, 
it means it needs to be repaired in order to depart for new adventures. So we'll have to get around to that. I'm going to pause again. And then what else we got here? We've got stuff on the dock. So there's our 260 remaining building blocks. Looks like we've got some rubber. I'm guessing this is tons. So like 80 tons of rubber, 300 units or whatever that is, liters or who knows what of uh, diesel and 240 units of looks like kind of copper plates. All right. What's it say here? All the cargo is temporarily, all the cargo that is temporarily stored in the shipyard. While the shipyard gets too full, it is unable to unload more cargo from the ship. You can request unload with high priority to force trucks to prioritize unloading of the cargo from the shipyard. So we'll see. I think we're going to send a boat out to get more resources. And then uh, I can see where that may come into play, this hint of wanting to hurry up and unload the boat so you can go out again. Okay, now this says the shipyard itself, in addition to our boat, the shipyard is damaged and needs to be upgraded to be able to repair our ship. Okay, so we got to repair the shipyard and then we'll be able to repair the ship. All right, I hit pause because our first research completed. Let's go ahead and click on this message in the left here. It says new message, the research lab is already kaboom. Okay, scientist, captain, thank you for building the lab for us. I just came from there and it looks amazing. Kind of like this game. We are eager to start researching new technologies, but we need to know what to focus on. That is fantastic. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. First thing we're thinking of is farming to secure a reliable source of food. Farms take a long time to start producing food, so you, we should not delay in their construction too much. Second, construction parts assembly. Since we are low on parts and we'll need to build a lot more stuff, we'll also need to start smelting iron and harvesting wood to create construction parts. If we run out, we won't be able to build any more buildings. I should mention there was a typo in this very sentence about an hour ago, and I reported it on the Discord, and they have since issued another build, and who knows what other fixes came in, but they actually fixed the typo, so that's pretty cool. All right, scientists, third, beacon. The island is not on the map, so it's unlikely that anybody will find us, but there are surely other small boats around searching for refuge. If we erect a beacon and power its light using electricity, we can attract refugees. The more people we have, the more things we can do. Okay, it's going to be a tough choice. What do labs need in order to operate? Research is very intensive work and needs unity to progress. Unity is naturally generated in settlements when people are well and happy, but can decrease when their needs are not met. You can visit the settlement to see the details. You can also later provide the settlement with more services to get more unity. All right, so now we're learning what unity is all about. It's kind of a, it's almost like a happiness you, that you've seen in other games, but you can kind of spend that happiness on research and it accumulates. So as long as you're keeping your people happy, you get this unity, it accumulates and you can spend it on research and maybe there's other ways to use it too. All right, sounds good. And with more Unity, we can also build more research labs to speed up the progress if needed. All very good. Okay, that's that. Let's, uh, we'll just close this out here with a little X. And we need to pick another research, so let's get on it. They suggested farming. Here's our tech tree. Let's, we got the game pause, so let's take a little look at this. It's our first glance. Oh, I didn't even do this last time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think I just wet my pants. All right. Look at this. This is awesome. Oh, I can zoom out. So I'm all the way zoomed out and now I'll zoom in. Wow. That is pretty cool. I'm not going to go, obviously I'm not going to walk through all these, but go ahead and pause it. If you want to just take this in as you get, as I'm scrolling, this is uh, yes, very good. Making me happy. I like tech trees. <laughs> <laughs> and this one looks like it's pretty good. All right. It's very cool. All right. Sorry about that. All right. We need to pick farms. Let's find it. Here it is. Basic farming. It's at the bottom. That one I think is a no brainer. Let's just get it going. Boom. And then maybe next after that. Let's see. Construction offers us. Production of basic construction parts and assembly and then unit storage and then it shows us what it's going to take to uh, actually make the construction parts so that's probably going to come next 
because uh, we need, we've got 260 of these construction parts now. I may end up calling them building blocks uh, in this series, but we've got 260 now. We're going to spend these fairly quick. And then, uh, so getting this construction research next is going to be important. All right. We will see plenty of the tech tree as we go on. Let me get out of this bottom right, left hand. I'm sorry, bottom left. We can just hit back and get out. And I think we're good. We placed the furnace. We placed the, or we picked a new research. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, so our trucks should go, or they're already starting, right? They're already, ooh, they already built it. Okay, so we've got a furnace here. I'm going to pause again, just again, just to play, play it as safe as we can here. We have a new tutorial message that came up. They come up kind of fast early on. That makes sense. We're just getting started. Let's read that one. Tutorial iron smelting. Furnace allows melting ores, scrap, or other products into molten material, which can then be cast to final products in the caster. Smelting iron. The easiest way to smelt iron is to use metal scrap. This method is efficient. However, supplies of metal scrap are limited. A more scalable way is to use iron ore mined from deposits around the island. Unlike smelting scrap, smelting iron ore produces a waste product called slag that needs to be transported out. Other products work similar, similarly to iron. You can choose what recipes are enabled in the furnace by clicking on them. An enabled recipe is shown with a green border around it. Okay, that all makes sense. Fuel. Furnace needs coal as fuel. While wood on its own does not burn hot enough for the furnace, you can use a charcoal burner to produce coal from wood. The process of making charcoal requires a lot of wood, so it should be used only as a temporary measure before coal can be mined from the deposits. Wood is a valuable raw material used, for example, in construction parts. Okay, so we're going to have to start with uh, generating coal from wood but sounds like we want to get the coal mine going as soon as we can so we don't deplete our trees. And I'm not sure, like I mentioned earlier, if we can replant trees. All right, wood harvesting. To harvest wood, you need to assign your truck to tree harvesting. That can be done either via the truck's UI or via global vehicles overview panel that can be accessed from the top left part of the UI. Top left part of the UI. Maybe somewhere in here. We'll take a look. I haven't seen it yet. All right. Uh, once a truck is assigned, it will automatically chop down nearby trees. To prioritize trees that you would like to get removed sooner, you can use the tree designation tool in the bottom toolbar. Uh, and later on, you can upgrade to a tree harvester that cuts trees in a much faster pace. So down here at the toolbar, the hot bar, it's not going to highlight because we have the tutorial window open. But right where my mouse is, this is where we're going to what we're going to use to mark trees for being harvested. And we'll do that probably real soon. What do we got left? Waste products. Furnace produces exhaust gas that needs to be piped out, usually straight to a smokestack. Note that releasing toxic exhaust gases will cause air pollution that can cause population illness and decrease happiness. That means less unity. Uh, later, you might want to consider researching gas cleaning technologies and clean the exhaust to reduce air pollution. Some recipes also produce slag, which is essentially remaining minerals that did not melt in the furnace. Slag can just be dumped on the terrain, use dumping designations, and there's, we'll see that, uh, used for terraforming or ground up in the mill to be used in products such as concrete. That's probably what we we'll want to do is that latter one. All right, that's it for this little tutorial. We'll shut that off. Now, before I, I uh, spin up the... Uh, the game again. I'm going to leave it on pause because I want to show you some stuff here in the smelting building menu. So they talked about a smokestack. You can see this thing will, will exhaust a few different types of uh, exhaust, I guess. There's steam depleted, steam high. That must be like a high temperature steam or something, low temperature steam here, and then just exhaust. And that's what this guy is going to put out. It's just exhaust. So let's grab the smokestack. And we'll get it kind of close, but I might be able to snap it right on. Okay, see, as I mouse close to it, now I get this little kind of like two plugs connected icon shows up. Boom. So I'll just click here. So that's already connected for me. And again, there's two outputs up here, it looks like, right above that, where we can output the uh, molten metal from the uh, 
from the furnace. Now, what else is in here? If I look down here, we got charcoal maker. The um, if I go back to the furnace and we look at the recipe, it takes metal scrap plus coal, and it'll get us molten iron plus that exhaust. We've already taken care of the exhaust. We'll worry about the molten iron in a minute. Right now, we're going to look at the coal. In order to get that, we got to put that uh, coal burner guy down. So let's plop that down. This isn't real big. Now, this thing has exhaust associated with it, too. And I'm just looking. I guess I see an output arrow for the coal. So I'm going to anticipate belts later on and just kind of try and line up what I think is a little arrow on the right side of this building, right underneath that little coal icon, and have that arrow line up with one of the inputs in the furnace. So I'll just pop this guy down. Boom. And now, let's see. I want to get this. This guy is also has exhaust coming off of it. So, And then we've got our kind of smokestack here has another pipe coming out this side, which I think we can put more stuff into it. So let's see. Let's grab a pipe. And if I go into transports here on the hot bar at the bottom, got two things. Molten channel. This is what we're going to use for the uh, molten metal. And then pipe. It says transports liquids and gases at a max rate of one per second with a speed of two tiles per second. Okay. I'm not sure how the speed works. Let's see. How do we want to do this? Let's see. That pipe, I guess I need to come over the top. I didn't want to. Um, Tell you what. Let's place this differently. If I can, let me grab the bulldozer. Hopefully we'll get our money back. Boom. Let's put the charcoal maker up here. Boy, no matter what I do, it's going to be in the way. Or am I going to have to cross my pipes over? You'll see what I mean, what I'm talking about in a minute here, I think. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no good way to do this. Anyway, let's plop it down and we'll worry about it in a little bit. But I'll show you my concern a little later. All right, we're going to drop this guy right here. I'm going to go grab my um, pipe and connect up here. You can see I got that little plug icon there. Boom, one click. I'm going to click here to fork it. And then I've got another, as long as I mouse over here. Boom. Okay, now I've got another plug. I'm just going to go ahead and primary click. Boom. Okay, now that is wired up for the exhaust. So I've got two buildings exhausting out the smokestack. Hopefully that will work. What else? We need to get wood into our charcoal maker. Right? Takes wood. It's going to, I guess that's 40 seconds of time. And then we're going to get coal and we're going to need exhaust. So they told us a couple things about wood and they said we got to mark trees. So let's do that. Again, I'm down to the hot bar tree harvesting prioritization. I'm just going to click that. And I am going to, yeah, let's just harvest these ones over here. About, about all this. Boom. So now those are the priority to be harvested. And in order to get them harvested, we got to pick a truck or two or however many you want. But I got one here that seems inactive. And down at the bottom of the uh, dialog here for this truck, I'm just going to click assign to tree harvesting. So the truck will automatically chop down trees for wood and deliver it where needed. Okay, so I'll click that. And then so I guess this takes two workers are going to get consumed by this truck once it gets moving. And so, yeah, we don't have to specify where the trucks need to go. They'll find their way. So we didn't, you know, we haven't really touched a truck until this point and they're delivering materials. We've got a truck that's picking up scrap from the communications, the old communications tower. It's delivering that scrap into the furnace. We've already got nine at the furnace or no, that's just the recipe. I don't think this shows what we have. It just says missing input. Um, so yeah, so my point is these trucks keep moving around 
Before we hit play, let's take a quick look at the research. Okay, it says it's researching basic farming. Let's go ahead and hit play now. I think we're good. While it's building the charcoal smelter and all this stuff for the charcoal maker, let's take a look at the metallurgy. I think there's more we need to do here, actually. Okay, the metal caster. We've got the furnace, we got the charcoal maker, we got the smokestack. This guy casts molten materials into slabs. Pretty sure we're going to need this, so let's grab it. It looks like it's got one input for molten metal. I'll try and line up those arrows as best I can. I'm going to leave a little bit of room. I always do in my factory designs. I never really cram things together too much. All right, let's pop that down. Kaboom. Check to look at the recipe. Takes molten iron and turns it into plates. And then here we saw the molten channel under transports. Let's use that and connect this up. Boom. To hopefully that's lined up. Boom. And we are still under, we're still playing. So it's uh, moving along. Your trucks are doing their thing. I don't know if we can see. There's a truck here collecting trees. If we kind of see it here. It's collecting wood. I think we just saw a tree disappear. That truck's loaded up with wood. It should go to the charcoal burner. And this guy's already got some wood on hand. And it is, there's our exhaust coming out. And now it is producing coal or charcoal. And this indicator shows it's currently going to produce four. And this one in parentheses, I believe, is the local inventory. So right now there's four coal sitting in the inventory of the charcoal maker. And that will be picked up and delivered here to our blast furnace. This guy is still waiting on input. He's got 40 iron or scrap iron in its inventory. So plenty of iron. I think it's waiting on the coal. So we just got to wait for the trucks to recognize that coal's there, I believe. Unless I built this too close and somehow these, these trucks got jammed in. That could be the case here. I'm a little, a little concerned. So this recipe is selected. And I do not see it working. Let's see this guy. What I'm going to do. Yeah, I did not run into this problem my first time through. We're almost at the end of the episode, but let's just see if we can solve this before we move off. I have a feeling this truck is blocked in. So what I'm going to do, I don't think I can move the truck. They're not needed. Let's just see coal. Oh, he's collecting coal. It could be he's waiting for a full load before he's going to deliver. Yeah, so there is a truck picking up coal. Let's just see if once it gets... Uh, once this truck gets, where is it? Not that one. This one. Truck cannot deliver coal. No valid destination. Should be this one. Needs coal. Oh, this says no recipe. I guess I got to select this. There we go. So I just clicked on the recipe. It turned green. Now everything's working. Here comes the coal. <clears throat> You can see it's got five in storage already. Now it's got 13. And we should see a little animation here. Yeah, there goes the coal up to the top or the iron that, or uh, yeah, that might be the scrap iron coming in up the little chute there. I'm zoomed in as far as I can. Out comes the molten metal down the chute into our metal caster. This is pretty cool. Caster dumps the hot molten metal into the molds that looks pretty sweet to me and we're getting our iron plates or steel plates let's just watch that process finish and then we'll call this an episode i think that's done let's see it's going to collect there it goes okay out come the hot plates and zoop, conveyor into storage. And now we've got more molten metal came in, eight units of that, and we've got eight iron plates in storage. 
let's wrap this first episode here. We went through a little bit of the introductory tutorial scripts. I think there's more to come. In fact, there's one, well, not yet. But yeah, we're off to a decent start. Captain of industry, man. I've been waiting for a long time <laughs> to do this Let's Play. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you do, consider giving the video a thumbs up. That helps my tiny channel grow. And for now, this is GliderCat signing off saying thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next episode.